why did it take so long for the Arab Revolution to sweep the Middle East? Why haven't this, what you did very successfully over a couple of years, you personally, why didn't it take hold years before? Why weren't there other two calls to take care of it? Look, when we decided to make the Arab Spring as a youth at the time in 2011, it came as a real need. We, all the youth in Arab Spring, give a uh, fed up from corruption, from dictatorship, from hegemony. So <coughs> they fed up. And so, and but, also but, but with people the, were fed up for years and stuff. No, that is I, more, right. that is more this generation become more yani, frustrated from the situation. And also at the same time, they have a big aware, uh, awareness. They are, they, they are the, the, the generation of technology, mm -hmm. the generation of social media, and they believe through the social media that they can do something. So, uh, so it's really, really neat. And we have the, it, when you are, when you reach to the bottom of the law, of it, so there is no way just to claim. It, you have to choose, to die or to claim. So we choose to claim, we choose, you know. So uh, this is what, to, what we did in Arab Spring. We feed up and also we had the tools to fight our, you know, frustration. And we have the tools to do to lead the street, which is the social media at that time. Um, now let's make this the, the, another question. Okay, you did this great moment, and you did a great peaceful revolution, and you did a great Arab Spring against those dictators. Why the situation is there now? Why there is chaos? Why there is a lot of blood? Why there is wars? I can tell you that that is not the result of Arab Spring. That is not the result of people, of youth, of women who led the street uh, uh, and when they're battling the first step with the five countries and now with two countries, with which, which is Algeria and, 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 and uh, Sudan. So we did a great revolution and we know that with this revolution, when we decided to make this revolution, we decided at the same time that we will sacrifice and we will pay the price and the price will be so high because we know how ugly our dictators. So when we decided, we didn't think that, okay, we, then we will say, go, leave the authority and they say, oh, okay, bye, my salam, my No, we knew that they will face our non-violent with violence. Um, so, but with all that, we, we, in, uh, except, except uh, Syria, we passed and we started to enter to the transitional period. We started the method for democracy in the transitional period. And what happened after that? And this is very, very important to know, all of you, that the, the one who caused all this war and one who caused all this cause is the counter-revolution. And after every great revolution, there is counter-revolution. And this is what all the history of revolutions <coughs> have, even in the US, in French, in everywhere. So after every great revolution, there is counter-revolution. And the counter-revolution in that faced Arab Spring was led by three countries, Saudi, UAE, Emirates, and Iran. Those three countries, was very afraid from Arab Spring, from achieving democracy in those countries, because they knew that if the democracy of the revolution went in these countries, that means that their people will start revolting. So they made all the kinds of, you know, ugly tools to face the the the, the uh, our our victory. And also they, uh, yeah, they led the counter-revolution by military coup, like what happened in, in, in uh, Egypt. They made it by terrorist group, like what happened with ISIS. And this is a big debate. We can open it in another way. What is the link between dictators and ISIS, the dictators and terrorists? How the dictators use terrorism as a tool 
to reserve their chairs and to convince the West that the alternative, it is not the Democrat people, is the terrorists, to fear them. So, so they used the terrorist <coughs> groups, the military uh, coup, and the militias, like what happened in Yemen. And also the incubation, like now what is happening in Yemen now, what is what we are suffering now in Yemen. We are suffering from ugly coup waged by Houthi militia. This Houthi militia was supported, and imagine, you can, uh, this is a big, big, you know, uh, um, discussion. Imagine that militia of al-Houthi was supported by Saudi, Emirates, and Iran. How it comes, how Saudi and Iran, how it comes, it's unbelievable, but that is what happened in Yemen because both of them have the benefit of stopping this revolution and destroying Yemen. So, militia for the coup, they had no support by them. Yes, they didn't coordinate as a Saudi and Iran, but they have, you know, Saudi and Emirates pay money, and Iran has, you know, the, the benefit. It's a long story, but this is what happened. The militia of Al-Houthi make a coup against our, uh, because we did a great transitional period. We wrote, we made a great uh, national dialogue, and we wrote the draft of constitution, and we were just a small step to make the, put the, uh, the, the constitution in the referendum. They made the coup. After that, after the, the coup happened, the, then the war came by Saudi and the Emirates. Now Saudi and Emirates, they said that they supported our president, our legitimacy, in front of the militia of al Houthi, who was, they were supporting them in the hidden, you know. So they took the reason to make the war. So now they said, we are supporting the legitimacy, which is the president, in front of Houthi militia. We want to restore the legitimacy to Yemen because our president is in Riyadh. And yeah, Yemen, the capital, is occupied by the militia of Houthi, who is supported by Iran. While the truth is that they are waging this war, this war because they want to occupy Yemen. Now they are dividing Yemen. Now their project, U U Saudi Arabia and the UAE, is working on dividing Yemen, is working <coughs> in destroying Yemen, is working in making Yemen as a failed country, because this is the only way to occupy Yemen. This is the only way to steal the wealth of Yemen. Yemen has a very important geostrategic, you know, uh, uh, place. We have, we, uh, we have um, the Bab al Mandeb Strait. We have, we are uh, link between Africa and Asia. We have a lot of wealth, uh, uh, wealth, uh, wealth. We have oil, gold, etc., etc. Et Yemen is a very rich country. And it's, it's bigger than they thought. So when they see Yemen, they decided to occupy it. So what we are now suffering from those counter-revolution countries that they attack us because they don't want Yemen to be a democrat. And this is the first reason. And the second reason, because they want to occupy Yemen. <coughs> and they want Yemen to be divided and to be a failed country. OK, this is, and this is the method of the counter-revolution countries. and they. If you see what they did in Egypt, they have their reason. In Libya, they have their reason. They, have, they, they, have, they are the devil everywhere. But the question, what is the position of the international community? This is the big question. So, so what they are doing, what, why, did they, why did they continue US, UK, and why they are continuing selling weapons to Saudi and UAE to kill the Yemeni people? to kill people in Libya? And why, where is the people here, the elite people like you, to tell them to stop their strategy on, 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 on supporting these uh, rogue countries? <laughs>